So sites like Kaggle and data.world are great for getting the data you want to be able to get if you want to do like a project or something, but they're not so great when you're trying to find a particular set of data, especially when it comes to football data, or in the worst case scenario that I found was to actually find that the data I've been using is not being updated anymore and therefore it's out of date and I don't even have last season's data. Which is what led me to find a solution. And this is where I come across World Football R, which is an R package that actually scrapes four separate websites that lets you see various data from season data, from player data, team data, stats within a game, your shot positioning, all those different things and also be able to get transfer information, injuries, and if contracts are coming up. So you can literally find almost anything you want and it's up to date. And it's really easy to pull that data with just a little bit of our coding. So if you don't know how to use it, I can show you easily how to do this and how to install everything. So if you already have it installed, you can skip to the point where I start talking about it. And if you don't, then I'm just gonna show you how you can install R and R Studio so you can pull the data. So the first thing you wanna be be able to do is just install base R. R Studio is a separate program that allows you to have a nice interface when doing any coding in R, but for actual running R, you need to install R. And to do that, you just need to just either search for R programming or download R, and then you can come across it, or you can just use the link I'm showing on screen. I also have it in the description below. And then all you do is come to your screen and then it asks you to download, install R. You just pick your operating system. In my case, it's Windows, you just click through. And then you've got base R and then it says here, install R first time. All you have to do is just click on that and then go through it and then install like so. I already have it installed, so I'm gonna install it again. And also you want to be able to install R tools. I'm gonna to pull an actual R package that's being held in GitHub. And then we're just gonna pull in the updates that way because the actual version that's in R is not the most up-to-date version. So what you wanna do is just install R tools, pick the latest version, just go in, find where to install, which we got down here, click on it, and then it will save it. And then you can just install it and then that'll be done. And then the last one is just then going to R Studio once you have that all installed. All you have to do is just go to this link here or just search R Studio, And then all you need to do is just download the version here. It automatically knows I've got Windows. So that's why it says it here. But if you are using a Mac, then you can, if this doesn't say Mac here, you can scroll down and then you can install the Mac version down there or any other version that you need. Now, if you do want to have a bit more detailed way to install all of these, I do actually have a video where I've covered it before. So you can just look at that in the description below. So once you have all that installed, installed or you already have it installed so you just skip from the last bit then all you have to do is either create yourself a new script so our script we have to do is go to file new file our script and then create a new one if you want to do it all by yourself and follow along here or you can download the full script that I'm going to be going through here from data.world in the description below so the first thing you want to do when you come in is what we want to be able to do is just install a package called DevTools. World Football R, if I pull up the website, is on GitHub under this URL here. I also have the link in the description, obviously. And then this gives you a sort of breakdown of what you need to do when you install. So you can see down here, it tells you install packages, dev tools, and then you want to install the actual R package within GitHub. So you need dev tools to be able to install GitHub held packages. And then you just point in by putting in library world football R. So that information is already actually within the GitHub page that we've got here, if you want to follow along that way. But what we're gonna do is just simply now install the package DevTools. It will ask you to restart if you need to. So you do yes. And then once that's installed, now we can install the actual World Football R package. And I believe I have the most up-to-date version, so it probably won't install it. It'll just tell me it's already got the latest version. And it does. It says it skipped install of World Football R. So that means you can always check every time you go in to check that you have the most up-to-date version. It's updated quite a bit. So normally when I go in, it will need another install, which is what I do. But if you go into the actual GitHub area here again on the page, down here you have news, which basically tells you all about the different updates that have happened. And these are quite important to know because base R version of it would be using old ways of doing it. So if you were looking online how to do something, it wouldn't work unless you were using the most up-to-date version. 
And a good example is like down here, when they did an update to 0.60, they changed what the calls were to get the data and then have different name. So instead of it just being like get underscore advance underscore match underscore stats, it's now using FB underscore advance underscore match underscore stats. So that's why it's important to obviously have the most up to date version, but then also to check if you're having any trouble, is there any bugs that are aware of? Are there any changes of the names that you might need to look into? So that's where this page can come in handy. But that's just covering if there are any sort of issues you come across, because sometimes you do when you're trying to work with these programs, they don't always work. And then therefore, this is how you can find out where this information is, because I don't know what's going to happen on later down the line as this video ages. If we head back, we now have our package installed and ready to use. Now, one other package you want to be able to use is dplyr. And what dplyr does, it just allows you to just have an option called glimpse, which just gives you a view of the data, like URLs that we want to be able to use in our code to be able to just grab that bits of information. But also it's brilliant for filtering as well. It's just basically a transformation data. So if you want to play around with your final data set that you've pulled before you export it into CSV to be able to take it into an have a program or anything or even just do some manipulation with NR itself and then create your own graphs then this is the perfect package for doing that so all you need to do is install it I already have so I'm just going to run the library so I actually have it set ready to use so then what I'm going to do is start going through some of the example now these examples I've got here at the moment, you actually can get directly from that same page, but in a different link on the GitHub page. So if I go back to that page, this will give you an idea of how much data you can get. You see down here the usage, and this is where you can click on to get into the first website, which is FBREF. And then it gives you all these different examples of what the different types of data you can pull and how it sort of links to other sites as well. So a good example, is the first one is basically creating a table that gives you mapping between FBREF and Transfer Market. So they're two separate websites, but to be able to actually read against the two, especially when it comes to players, players' names might be different. So therefore you want to be able to use what the URL link is because then that's a unique identifier. And then this just basically just gives you a rundown of like an example of what to do. And here we've got mapped players and then it's using player underscore dictionary underscore score mapping and then we're just going to view it again like I said dplyr just glimpse and then it's going to give you this information here so all you do is just take that information if you're just going to be doing your own script and not using the one I've already created you can just come in just copy that paste it in so if we go in it's basically this information here and if we just run that we can see we've got a glimpse of what it looks like so we can see what the different columns are so there's four columns and there's 14,403 rows so it just gives you a bit of an idea of what the data set's like and then you can view it and you can either view it by double clicking on here you can also click under here so then all you have to do is then to view the data either like I say double click on that or you can type view and then put in whatever you pointed this information to so if we just run that we can now see the whole table and within that table we can see we have the player name and then we have the fbref actual url so if we were to say let's just nick that one there and and then if we go back to the web, let's just quickly paste in that and let's paste in that. And then you can see we have the player there. And then if we go back, we can see that's exact player there. And then if we go to this one and if we take that URL, because it's the same one, but it's going to be a different site. And as you can see, he's there as well. So here we can see he's playing for Brighton. Country is Republic of Ireland. And here it is the same as well. Brighton, Republic of Ireland, centre forward. And it's got all different information. But they're two separate websites. So it's completely different websites, but this gives you a means to be able to join the two if you wanted to be able to pull player data from one website and then player data from another. That then allows you to actually have a link to be able to join both of those player sets of data. Because when you actually pull data for player or teams or anything like that, you'll notice there's always a URL that sits down there. And that's the sort of the main thing that's always pulling. And then let's go on to the next example, which again, this is, I'm just using some of the examples that are shown all within that GitHub page. So if we was to run this one here, we can now get all Fulham squad player URLs. So of all the players who are currently in the Fulham squad are being pulled up here. And 
And again, if I pull up the URL, so as we can see, we have all the information here of all the different players. So we got them in that order. So you can see that one there, that one there, Tim, and next one would be Andreas. Yep, there you go. And it all goes down. And then you can go into them separately and then be able to see the same information. So if I was to click on this player here, so as you can see, I clicked through and that is exactly the same URL here. So you can get all that information just by clicking on the URL in there or by putting the information there so it gets that and then if we go to the next one we want to be able to get all team urls for the premier league so if we go into this one we now have all the team stats here and if we go down to where fulham there they are so you can see fulham is pulled up the url and it's there and it's giving you the stats so you can basically get all the urls you need and then those urls you can run through to be able to then extract the data from it now if you want to just simply just get information about actual country league so in this case we are going to go for the championship in 2021 and we just want to get the actual league url so that's all it is is just focusing on just what that league is and we don't know what it is in this case we did know what it was here but if we wanted to know to get the one to put into here all you need to do is be able to put in the underscore league underscore urls and then all you have to do is say which country it is using the free code name again this is all within that github page where you can see that information you can do gender m for the men's league or if you want to do the women's league it'd be w and then for season end year it's basically using what is the last year of the season so if you got for this case it would be 20 and 21 and then tier second if you did first it'd be the premiership so if we run this we'll then get the championship and again if you just copied that and pull it in you'll get that information and it's important that you understand about pulling the urls because it's the urls that actually help you grab all the data or at least be able to find the URL for the data you want if you don't already have that URL because you could just be clicking on the site and go oh yeah I want the data from that page you can then just take that URL and then pull it in so these are like different ways you can actually get the information you need and it's important that you know that because it makes your life a lot easier being able to find what you want and being able to extract the data so for this one all that this data is is going to be pulling up we want to be able to actually get season data for all the match results for the English Premier League league last season so all we have to do is just put in fb underscore match underscore results and then in there we do country and we got england gender m the, the men's league season end because it ended in may this year so we want to do 2023 that then gives you it and then tier first and then non-dom league url is just na that's just one of the things that was just in there actually you probably don't even need to add that it was just there as part of the example and then if you run this i've already run it so I'm just going to view it now. We can see all the results. So basically, forgetting about, let's say, the match URL stuff for now, if you wanted to just get full match results for a whole season, all you have to do is just put in that information, understand which country you want it from, what the season is, end, what tier, and M if you want the men's league, or if you want the women's league, you can put in the actual W just to do the same. And then it pulls up the information for you to then view. And what you've got in here is you've got the week when it did, you got the day, you got the date, you got the time, you got the home team, the goals, the expected goals, the away team, their expected goals, the attendance, the actual venue, referee, and then the match URLs. Again, like I say, the tables will always have these URLs and it's the URLs that are important to extract more information. But the good thing here is because this table has a list of the URLs, you can get additional match data by basically running this column through another Another function that gets actual match stats but first I'm going to show you just what you need to do just to export before I forget now one thing when you're creating these is when you want to be able to export something you need to be able to save it as a variable so you just give it a name I've just given this one season underscore 22 underscore 23 you can call it anything you can just call it data if you want to call it data just call it data it's just you point it to that saves it as table got it and then you can just export this as write.csv and then put in whatever you call it so like I say, if you want to call it data, you can just call it data. That's the actual table name. And then a comma 
and then whatever you want to call it. Now, if you save it with just a name and then .csv, that will save it in your documents folder if you're on a PC, if you're on a Mac, I'm not sure actually. But the, the main thing here is wherever your main saving folder is for R, that's where it would save it. Documents folder is generally the norm. That's where I have it going to. But if you did want to actually save it in a folder that you got specially just to save the data because you just want to export it and then you just want to view it in Excel, play around with it in Excel, play around it in another program, stick it in Python, stick it in Power BI, stick it in Tableau, whatever you want to do with it, you can just export the table and then have it saved in a folder, which then you can pick it up from. And to do that, you'll just need to put in what your drive is, in this case, C drive, and then it'd be something like users. If you're always using backslash, it's always two. Let's just say you want to just save to your C drive. All you have to do is just do C drive and then backslash, backslash, and then whatever you want to call it here. So a good example is if I just did this, copy this, did this, it would save it to my C drive. So that's all it is. If you wanted, then you had a folder called football, you would just call that football and then you just do two backslashes and then that saves in the folder. So it's like C drive folders called football within there, that's where it will save it. So that's how you can save different files because really, unless you are a user of R, you might be using this for that. But if you're someone who's actually just downloaded R just to try this out and get the data you want, like me, I use R occasionally for this kind of information, but actually I wanted the data sticking to Power BI. So that's why you want to be able to export it. And then row.names equals false. This is just removing over here. If you look, you have these numbers down the side. Now, if you want to keep the numbers down the side, you just remove that option. But this is just so this doesn't get exported as well. So that's all that does. And then all you do is just run that. And then in your Excel, as we open this up, we can see all the data, as I mentioned. So now you know how to save. Now we can start looking at a bit more what the match details look like from the saved URLs in this column here. So to look at the actual match detail that we have saved within these match URLs in this particular table, all you need to do is just take one of the URLs just to view it. And we're going to just take the top one here, which is Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. And we're going to put this into FB underscore match underscore summary. And then we're just going to save the table as match underscore sum. And then that will give you the result of this here. And what we can see is all the events that have happened within the match. So that's why you have different lines. So go along here, you see there's a lot of the same information. You get the formation, you get the score, you get the home expected goals, yellow cards and red cards, but it's the totals and the same for the away team as well. But if you scroll along, we can see where the actual event types are. Now we can get the information of going who the goal was scored by and it's scored by the away team and it happened on the 20th minute which is in the first half. It wasn't a penalty. Martinelli was the goal scorer and the assist was Zinchenko and then that made it 1-0. And then we can see if we go down here, we can see there's the next goal. Again, wasn't a penalty, it was in the 85th minute. It was actually an own goal. And the own goal was by, I'm not even sure how to even pronounce that name, which made it 2-0. Only a couple of actions happened within the first half. So goal and a yellow card. And then all the rest happened in the second half, which is expected because substitutions are more likely to happen then. So not only do you have the data that you can get just as just overall match data, and then you can actually see the events that happening and then on top of that you can then get the match lineups so instead of doing fb underscore match underscore summary you can do fb underscore match underscore lineups use exactly the same url and then if you run that you can now see all the players that took part what their player number was where they started so were they on the pitch or were they on the bench and then their nationality their position their age so it's got years and days and then minutes they played. So we can see here the person started, but then they actually went off at 57 minutes, which is most likely for this player here because they've been on the pitch for 33 minutes. So that two matched up will then give you 90 minutes. And then the number of goals, number of assists, so that would be number of cards yellow, number of cards red. And then again, the match URL because that's linked to it. And then you got the player URLs in there. And then you can look even more information to be able to then link to there. Or again, like we saw earlier, if you suddenly wanted to pull in with this match information and then link it to data from transfer market website and not just the FB ref website, then you can link it by looking up the player here and then pointing it to some data set you got there. So you've got your linking point. So if you're building a model where you need to point to something and you've got an actual dimension table with the mapping, this will help a lot. 
but in this case we're just looking at the main set of data and you can just export that now you might be thinking oh, that's great we got like one but what happens if i wanted all the data that is in here so all the match data for all these matches that have happened across the whole season I don't want to sit there and just add in a URL each time. But this is where this run makes life a lot easier. So the good thing is when you have a URL and you apply it is this URL is there because you added that URL. If you added a column that has all of the URLs you want to run in. So even if say you had a bunch of URLs that weren't even actually here, but you wanted to just run by particular ones and you had that saved as CSV, you could just load in that CSV and then run it again against this particular function here, because what that would do, it would just look at the URLs and run it. So all we wanna do is because we've created this one and we have the match URL, we wanna say, use that table. And then to look at just that column, which is the match URL column, you just need to put in a dollar sign and then it goes match URL because that is the name of the column here, but that particular data set that joins it up. We're then just going to call it this. And then all I've done is include a time pause equals three. And what this is, is because this is actually web scraping without you having to do all the additional coding to get data is each time it pulls the data, it's just having a little break before it pulls the next. It's just best practice to always, if you're going to do any form of scraping, is just have a pause between each thing you do because the last one you want to do is one get banned or crash a website so that's the reason why you just have this equals free probably wouldn't do much just putting this amount of information but never worth the risk so always run that with the extra time pause now this takes a while i think it probably takes about 15 minutes to extract depending on how quick your computer is and i already downloaded it so you can have a look so if we go here we have the crystal palace game here remember how that finished with it's got up to 12 lines if we go back we can see up to here 12 and then it's gone to the next game which is fulham against da -da -da, liverpool and then it's tottenham versus southampton yeah and then if we go back here and go back to the teams crystal palace and then fulham liverpool tottenham southampton and that means after them we should see newcastle nottingham forest so if we go back and then go below that there's newcastle and then nottingham forest there you go so you've got all that information like i say it just takes about 15 minutes so you can just run it step away because you can't do anything else once you're running it and uh, nothing else will run in r while it's still running something but once it's done it's done and then you can just export that like say like the csv one you can just rerun the code here just to save it and then you can just call it match data and then you can link the two together so you've got this data here and then you've got the other data and then you can link the two but one thing i will add is by the time this is released it will be the just coming up to the start of the new season and if you want to look at the data that is running at the moment with the current season when it kicks off is when it saves the data, I don't have an example, unfortunately. I was hoping they would pull it up already, but they don't actually have the new season data already showing yet. When you go in, this is your link to the match summary. This has a different name when it's just an upcoming. Yeah, I think it has something like history at the end or something. So it's not this because there's no actual match that's happened yet. So if you were to pull that data, so if you went back to this data here, you pulled this, but you were using 2024, it will give you an error when it tries to pull this information because it doesn't doesn't find all the URLs because the matches haven't actually happened. The way around this is home goals does not equal blank. And this is where dplyr comes in handy because you can do your filter is if you just filter by your data set before you run it in this and then do by home goals does not equal. So that's uh, for the logic of how R works is if you want something to equal, it's not just one equal sign, it's two because the equal sign is normally used to create a variable where all pointing to. So that's how it sees it. So you actually have to use two if you want to do actual equals to. But if it does not equal to, then you do an exclamation mark and then a equal sign. And then you do blank here, which is just two quotation marks, which does the job. And that will filter it just by the matches that have been played. So then when you run this, in this, so instead of running this season here, you've done filtered season, that will then give you the information. So if you find when you run it, you're getting an error and it's telling you that, try that and then run it through if you're doing with the latest data and that should sort out your problem. 
I found that out last season when I was playing around with this data. So now we know how to actually pull data that's related to matches. Let's try something a bit different here. So let's try and pull some actual shooting stats data. Now in this example, we're going to be using the FB underscore season underscore team underscore stats. And what this does allows you to pull different types of stats. In this case, I'm just going to be using shooting and I'm going to be getting that from the premiership because it's England male first. And then we're going to do season 2019 2000. 2020 and then that will give you all types of shooting stats that they've done over the whole season so it's not broken down by game it's just all season all the teams and how their performance has been and if we just run that we can have a look at the data and as you can see we have the season end year and we've got the squad and we've got team or opponent because it says versus so you can see what it is how teams performed versus and then how the actual team performed themselves and then you've got like the number of players the minutes played per 90 this just means games so you can see 38 games we know the 38 games in the season and then you've got goal standard shot standard shots on target shots percentage standard shots on target shots per with goals per shot standard and then goals per shots on target standard so you've got um, 0.3 of all shots they actually scored and then here you've got shots on target they actually scored was that many so it's close to 40 percent of the shots and then you have distance standard we've got some down here some reasons pulling through na is probably just have been playing out with the data at the moment and then you've got the standard penalty kick standard and then you've got the expected so the goals expected is the of the accumulation of shots what was the expected goals to come out of that and the expected goal metric is based on different variables so you are less likely to score a goal at a tight angle from distance if there's a player in front of you than you are if you're just right in front of the six yard box so the higher it is the more likely are you to score it and then this way if you actually looked at player stats and then looked at the expected goals compared to when they scored which we'll look at in a minute is that will then give you an idea of oh this shot that should have been an expected goal or more chance of scoring that and then you can see which players have more chance of scoring a goal which they're least expected to or players who miss more when they're expected to actually score so that's where the expected goal comes in here and this is where you can get some useful information because now you can create a chart that will actually be able to show you in a scatter plot form what the actual goals were. And then with the round on the X axis, the actual expected goal ratio, and then you can run a line to be able to then look to be able to point to go. If we know the team is above the line, then they have been more prolific in actually scoring the chances of expected goals. Anyone's below the line is they've had more opportunities to score, but just haven't taken them. So that's where this is a good sort of metric to look at. And again, this is just one season for one league. You can just pull that information, pull up multiple, save them down, take them into another visualization tool like Power BI or Tableau. And then you just got the data there and it's just data for whenever you want it. If you wanted to get last season data, you just need to just change that to 2023. And there you go. You have the data. So now we kind of covered a lot of the match data that you can get from FB Ref. We're now going to have a look at what data you can pull from the transfer market one. And again, if we go back, we can go back to the usage and then we can come into transfer market and see here. And then you can see all the different things that you can actually do here. Again, with the map players, how to get team URLs, player URLs, staff URLs, season level data, league deputants, expiring contracts, league injuries, team data. There's, you know, there's loads of other ones as well. As we know what we had with the previous one, these two have the majority of the data. So between FB Red and transfer markets you get the most data if you want to get like really nitty gritty stats that's where the other two come in handy especially under stat and we'll cover that one after this so if we go back what we're going to do is we just want to be able to pull all the urls for the teams in england which is just going to get you the english premier league because i think this only goes up for the top leagues in in the different countries not just going into championship could be wrong but when you run this particular one and say england 
it pulls the premiership. So if I run this, we then get a print of all the different teams here. So we can see we've got Southampton, Everton, Nottingham Forest, Brentford, and Leeds United because it's 2022 start. So that's another thing. It's different to the last one because the last one you use, they actually used season end. This is season start. So actually you could get 2022, 2023, yeah, but 2023, but 2022. So that's another thing that you have to just remember to do here. This is why I left the names in. You don't have to leave these names in. It just makes it easier for you to remember, especially when I'm showing you in this particular example. So then you got stats here to be able to get you the team URLs. The main thing is here is I just wanted to store this because down here, I want to get all the team transfers. Now, again, this one takes a while and I have already pulled this information and I've saved this as ELP or EPL even underscore transfers. And then we can see all the transfers for last season. As we can see, Man City are the first team here and we can see all the players that come in and then it tells you arrivals and departures. One thing to do, which you need to look in or look out for even, is you do have arrivals that are actually loans. So if the player's been loaned out and they come back at the end of the year, they come back in again. But luckily, is underscore loan tells you if it's true. So if they're a loan, you don't want to include that if you want to just look at pure actually bought that season. And this is where you can then do another filter on the data to go is underscore loan equal false. So as we can see here, if it's a loan is false, then it's not including the loans. And then if we run that, we now have none of the loans. So now we just got all the Premier League teams from last season and all of the transfer windows because that's what all is. Because if you look in here, before we did say the loan, you notice you got window, you got summer, and then there'll be winter in here as well. Winter, there you go. If you just want to get summer or winter, you can just type in summer or winter there. But if you wanted both, then that's what you want to do. And then that will give you all that information. So that's how you get the transfers. And then again, if you just wanted to export that, all you have to do is just do write.csv, put in the table you want to export, save it where you want to save it with, with .csv, and if you don't want to include the numbering down the side, just do row.names equals false. And there you go, you got yourself a data set where you can look at all the transfers. And then if you wanted to get more, you can just keep pulling more and more and more, and you can get all the data sets, all the transfers in just a few clicks, or you could just keep just running them. Or if you're a bit more clever, you can do a for loop, but that's a separate thing. And I'm not going to go into that detail because I'm basing this on just you wanting to be able to just get some data as and when you need it. And another interesting bit of data you can get, you can get actual Premier League or any country really, but it's top league in the country is, is where you can get the actual current injury. So in this example, we are just doing TM underscore league underscore injuries, country underscore name equals England. And then what that will do is then pull back all the injuries that are currently with teams. So in here, there are Kevin De Bruyne. There's quite a few Arsenal players who are injured. And this is basing on current because as we can see, we have Sheffield United in here and they were promoted last season. So they're gonna be up there and so it's Burnley. And these are all the players that are actually stated as injured. If we go into the website, as you can see, this is the data. If you went directly into transfermarket.com, this gives you the list here. It's exactly the same list as we've got here. So we can see all in the order of what we just saw there. And it's quite recent because you even got Wesley Fonana, who's just been seen as injured. But for some reason, it doesn't actually include Ryan Sessegnon, who's actually gone and had surgery on his ankle again. I think and for some reason he's not included in this but he is someone who I know is injured so if we wanted to say just look at a player's injuries and this is a good example here if you know the player URL you can just put that in and then you can find their history so if we run this for Ryan Sessegnon and then we open that up we can see him there and then the season injury so that's the season when he was injured. This is the type of injury, injury since, injury until, injury duration. So you can see how long his injuries were and how many games he's missed and which team he was playing for at the time when he was injured. And this is only including Premier League. So when he was in the championship with Fulham, he's not included in this. So it only goes up to this point here. So we know he's probably been injured before then, but because we only have the information just for the Premier League, or in this case, you have Hoffenheim who would be in the German League. So any of the top leagues where they're in, this would be when Fulham win the Premiership, that that was included. So now you remember where I'd done the print to be able to get all the leagues. So if we go up here, and then we've got all the different leagues here for the URLs which you put in there. All I've done is put it here again so we can print it. And then we're going to use this 
be able to then get a particular teams, which in this case is Leicester City side that won the English Premier League in 2015-2016. All you have to do is just find the team. There you go, Leicester City there. And then you see how it finishes because we use 2022 to be able to get the data. We now just do season ID 2015. And if you run this with TM underscore team underscore play underscore URLs, it will then pull all the URLs of the team players for Leicester City at that time. Castro Michael, all this information there. And then just to prove this is exactly the same as the website again, we go to Leicester City squad, remember 2015, there it is. And then we can see Castro Michael, Ben Hammer, Mark Schwarzer, Johnny Madsen, Robert Hoof. We go in, Schmeichel, Hammer, Mark Schwarzer, Johnny Madsen, Robert Hoof. So you can see it's in the same order. So we actually got that list. Now, if we were to then look at the player history, like we did here with Ryan Sessignon, instead of just putting in one, we're now going to put in the full URLs and because this is just URLs we don't need to do the table name and then the dollar sign you can just run this into this and then save it in this case I just called it Leicester underscore city underscore injury underscore history and if we run that and then view it we now have their injury history and as we can see here we can see where the club was and then the season injured now we just want to know for 2015-2016 we need to be able to pick when that injury happened in that season because at the moment all it's done is look at the player and then whatever club they played for since or ever because it's history looking at each player and then going what's your actual history of injuries in the top flight and then apply it to those teams we don't want that we just want to be able to just see the Leicester City one so what we do we come back down we take this information and then we just want to pick the season we want it as we can see here season underscore injured is the season we want so we know those are players who played for Leicester City and in that season when was their injuries and if we run that with the filtering on it we are now reduced to just the Leicester City players who were injured at the time and then if we have a look here it tells you what club they're actually in at the moment so that's not the club that when they had the injury that's the club where they're currently at yeah if we look along here we'll see that's Kante and then Riyad Mahrez and they're the only ones and it's quite interesting to see there's actually quite a few players who were part of that squad who were still in that team so still playing for Leicester City even after all this time and then if you look at technically who were the key players here now you've got Jamie Vardy Jamie Vardy he's at the bottom he missed two games it'd be interesting to sort of see around there did that make a difference did they lose any games then and then Kante he only missed one game and Henry Mahrez he didn't even miss any and if anything he was one of the outstanding players along with the two here where it's been missed by Jamie Vardy and they only missed a couple of games and then the other players only played bit part so the, the big point here is you can see how many injuries Leicester City had was very minimal compared to what most teams would have got if they had more injuries like most teams then they probably wouldn't have won the premiership but who knows it's always hindsight but they were very lucky to be able to play that amount of games and only have minimal injuries and that's probably good management well, we've been able to just sort of time it right. I don't know if there were certain substitutions. So they could be done looking at certain things. There's always there. Did they have like a good medical team? There's all, there's all these things that are at play, but everything fell in place here for Leicester to be able to actually win the premiership that season. And now we covered transfer market only on a few bits there. But if you want to play around a lot more, again, just have a look through the documentation on the GitHub page. And that will give you a lot more ones where you can have a look through. There's like ones where you can look over the club stuff staff and additional ones on top of that as well but now we're going to move over to under stats because now we're going to look at a bit more what is like sort of more stat related things if you want some good particular positioning data depending where it's like shots passes all those type of things it's a good one to use the understat data because there's a lot more out there to be able to then utilize packages to be able to use that data together if you want to do something in R. You're not, you can just pull the information out again. So in this case, what we're going to do is look out shot. So if we do understat underscore league underscore season underscore shots, and then the league is EPL, and then season underscore start underscore year, again, that's to show you if you want to start the season, so it's 2022 or 2023, that's how you get that particular the season now this one does take a long time i think it probably took about i'm gonna say 20 minutes it did take a while but i've already done it so i'm just gonna do view and then as we can see here this isn't just team stat this is everything 
And this is why it took so long. As you can see, you have a player, you have it's the home team or away team. Good example here is if we reduce this information down to just the game that we were looking at before. So again, if you just wanted to save this data, you can just export it by using this example here. But let's say if we just wanted to look at the first game, which again is going to be Arsenal versus Crystal Palace, as we can see here, Crystal Palace versus Arsenal. And what we're going to be using is the match underscore ID here to be able to then filter to buy that information. And then we're going to pick the away team. So in this case, it's just going to be Arsenal. And then if we run this, all it's going to do is just filter that whole table to the Arsenal shots that happen versus Crystal Palace in that first game of the season. Now, the interesting thing here is, as you'll notice, this result are what's happened so there's a block shot miss shot save shot and then you got the minute it happened and it says 19 minutes here if you remember back it said 20 minutes for the goal but then also there was two goals but where's the other goal because it's an own goal it's not counted as shot or it could be counted as a shot and then deflected and then went in depending on how you look at it but this is purely based on shots so throughout the whole game you can see how on the minutes when a certain action happened so a block shot miss shot save shot block shot goal block shot miss shot miss shot miss shot block shot and these are the players that did it so then as you can see here we have the expected goals and if you look at what the percentage is here and look at the ratios it's got here we can see the goal the goal was more expected to score than all of the other shots that have happened so they actually took that chance and it actually paid off the next one was another shot here which is a miss shot that was a bit closer and a block shot but the other ones are quite low chances to be able to get it and then you've got the situation which is basically saying these all happen from open play apart from this one this is from a corner so the corner come in shot type was a header and a goal so it must have been close to the goal most likely and then this is where the x and the y come in because that would be how it looks and you remember when i said there was an actual package that lets you plot actual football data that will then give us a goal that we can show where the actual shots were and the expected so that's where these can come in really handy then you can just export the data put it into your own visualization tool and then play around with it to be able to get the result you want and then you can have a look to see shot type left foot head right foot and then the team and then who assisted and what the action was if we look at the goal the goal is number five and then head pass so it looks like it come from a corner and then it's probably knocked on by Zinchenko overhead and then that was then headed in so that's how the goal happened based on the data here so now we know how the data looks. Now let's use a particular player and let's use the top scorer of last season in the Premiership, which is Hangman. So if we just filter by shots, which is this table here, by the player name with Erling Hangman, and then situation, we want to remove the penalties. Because obviously chances are penalties are gonna get scored and you don't wanna just have a big clump right in the middle. You wanna see actual shots from open play. The situation, penalty, situation is when it was telling you how it come about so you got is it set piece is it from a corner direct re kick open play or penalty now we don't want to have the penalties in so that's why we do with the filtering does not equal penalty and as i said earlier equaling is two equal signs to then give you the name so if we run this now we now get all non-penalty shot by angland and now if we take that data and then if we install gg shake r which again all you have to do is just run the dev tools one in here i already have it installed so i'm just going to just run the library to make it available and then one of the options you have is this one called plot underscore shot and then what that does is give you a goal all the shots on it and some additional stats as well so as we can see here all you've done is just literally take this table data and then put it in there and it's given you this result and what you're seeing is basically point of where it's telling you where the likelihood of the shots were so it's kind of like the average point it's then given you the average goals the average goals per shot the expected goals even and expected goals per shot and then the actual number of goals and obviously as excluding penalties this is how many goals he scored in one season in the premiership and then you can see here these are all the shots and then you got the results of the shots so all these green ones here are goals and then all these red ones are blocked ones the blue ones are saved 
And then shots that hit the post are normally here. So it's quite straight on where he's done shots off the post. And then miss shots are these green ones here. So that's very tight. So that's a good example. The size of it is based on the expected shot. So based on a lot of the information you got here, he missed quite a few that he should have scored. And he scored quite a lot that he basically should have scored. And the interesting thing is, bar this one shot here, all of his goals were in the actual 18 yard box and practically every single one in line with the six yard box here, apart from this one's a little bit of an outlier and this one being outside the box, but it's still within there. All others, he didn't score. So basically the way to stop him from scoring, probably if you look at this data, would have been keep him out wide, don't allow him be in the middle, but he's a central striker. So he's going to get himself in that position and he's good at what he does because he's able to move into those positions and actually trick the defenders so he's able to get that space as well so easier said than done but if you can kind of force him to just be just be on there that would actually probably stop him more than if he's there or even if you make him shoot from distance but generally how man city play it's not really about shooting from distance and they have players who can do that he's just there to get in the box and score goals and he did a lot and he did it very well and with that in mind now let's have a look at who came second which was harry kane so again all we have to do is just take the same data you can just literally copy that and change the player name it could be anybody doesn't matter and if we just run that we then get to see the difference in the two so if we go back and forth we can see here actually Kane's more shots happen from further out a lot further out so that's where you got here and it's a bit more to the left than it was for Hangland yeah because his is a bit more off centre right and more towards the sort of the penalty spot on average where the shots for Kane were more predominantly around here if you want to get a sort of an average of where the the shots happen and also you can see a lot of the shots were actually taken from various different angles and a lot of them are down the middle a lot of them down there but even if you pushed him out wide he still scores 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 there and distance as well and i think that looks like i think that might be a goal there and that's from very far out and he shoots from distance and you see it's quite a few block shots over here but the majority of the shots looking at it even though this is pointing a bit there because of there i think it's because there are some that are so far out wide here he probably shoots a bit more on the wider side all of his shots seem to be more coming onto the part there which is probably because if you've got son coming down he moves out and generally when he drops deep and then cuts through you see him he drops into this sort of area and then people overlap like kulazewski or something so you've got various reasons for why you would play like that and then you can see his expected goal is less so his shots are not as expected to score and then his actual goal goals per expected goals is lower but then that's probably expected because of where he's actually shooting them from and then it was four goals less even though he took quite a lot of penalties it makes me wonder actually he took quite a lot of penalties and he's only four goals less it means Hangler must have actually done quite a few penalties as well so yeah you can see the majority of the goals are happening for both players within this sort of area which is expected if you're a goal scorer and not a winger and a pure center forward you should be scoring from there but you can see from Harry Kane's dropping deep that means he's taking more shots over here than where you got Hangland who's able to just be constantly in the middle and it shows the two different styles of how the teams play with two prolific strikers so now you know how to play around with the data you get with understat now we're just going to look at some of the data you can get from footmob and one of the good ones i saw was all the sort of match stats that you could get for particular games so all i did was run the footmob underscore get underscore league underscore matches and then we're doing country england premier league name league name as premier league and then season 2022 stroke 2023 so again always slight differences depending on how you pull in the data but again all this information you can get from the github page where you look through the data and then if we was just to run this and then view the data we have the page url we have the id we have the teams we have the score and then it's finished so it's basically just giving you an update of what it is so i'm assuming when you run it for a season when it's running it will give you different bits of information saying it actually hasn't been played yet and all that kind of stuff we don't really have a lot of information here all you've got is just what the result is and everything so if we go for again our 
first one, which is the Crystal Palace versus Arsenal, because we've been using that as an example all the way through this. We now want to see the actual match stats of each team. And we can get that from doing foot mob underscore get underscore match underscore team underscore stats. And then you just put in the match ID, which is this one. And then if we just run that saved as team underscore stats, we now have that match and a lot more detail about it compared to what we've seen before. So here we have home team away team and then it gives you the stats for the home value and away value so if we look at this we have ball possession home team actually had more ball possession than the away team expected goals the score was actually higher for the home team than the away team total shots there were 10 each big chances two big chances missed two and one accurate passes 87 percent uh, against 82 percent and actually the home team had more it's actually quite surprised Surprising. When you think about how Arsenal played last season, you think they would have played more, but maybe for the first game of the season, it probably changed over time, but it's one thing to look at. And then you've got fouls committed. There was 16 by the home team, 11, and then offsides one and two, corners three and five. And then that's the top stat. And then you have these different stats that pull in. Now, when you probably want to pull this data, you probably just want to get rid of the NAs because there's no point because all that's telling you is this is just the shots and then they're not going to tell you how many shots because this is all the information under here and the same with expected goals, it'd be NA. So you just filter out the NAs before you export the data or you can export the data and then filter it later on. It's up to you. But then you've got your shots off target, two and four, shots on target, two, two, block shots, six and four, and then shots that hit work, none, shots inside the box, nine and eight, and then shots outside the box which matches up with the 10 10 yep so then that filters out that and then you've got your expected goals and then expected goals in open play and expected goals on target you can see that one's exactly the same and then expected goals and set plays was higher for the away team and then it says number of passes and then number of accurate passes so there you go so when we saw up here it was giving here these are actual not the number of passes but actual accurate passes and then we can actually see actual number of passes and then of those how many are accurate and that's where the percentage come in and and then own half passes, opposition half passes, long balls and how accurate they were from the crosses, how accurate they were, how many throw-ins there were. And then we're looking at defense and then we're looking at tackles one and then interceptions, the eight and nine block clearances, keeper saves, jewels one, ground jewels one. And you can see it's higher here, dribbles far superior on the away team compared to the home team and then yellow cards one and two so you can see you've just got some match information there for that particular game and as you've seen we've looked at this game through various different parts of what you can pull data from and that's just one game and you can see how much you can get if you manage to pull out all the bits that you need and you can pull them over for a whole season you've got this vast data set that you can play with which is far superior than anything you will find on on Kaggle or data.world. And this is why if you can get used to using this, it's a gold mine to be able to actually get data to do some great analysis and do some great projects or depending on what you do as a job, if you work for a football club, is use it to actually gain some information that you can actually use. And it doesn't matter if it's in actual, you work for a team that actually is data's in here, but then maybe use that data for even as you, when you're just doing grassroots football. It's just being able to just pick out information and ways how teams are playing and what they're doing to be able to look at this and then go oh wow well, we can get all this or you know you can just have some fun with it and just do some analysis of some players your teams might want to buy so you can just play around that way as well so i hope you found this video useful if you did please give a like and subscribe and if you want to try to create some graphs with football data i've got some great videos over here that you can check out as well so with that in mind until next time